Hey, this is Chris from Record Talk, and I'm going to do another episode of Blank and the Blanks. Uh, this time it's going to be the name variation slash compact disc version. There's going to be a bit of a theme music musically as well, because everybody that I'm going to show can probably be described as somehow being uh, rootsy, somewhat country influenced, but not straight country music. So you're going to have some like some cow punk. Uh, some alternative country, some Americana, some jam band, that sort of thing. And we've already... So the first variation is going to be like first name and then and the band. So we're going to show you Jason and the Scorchers. And so this is the um, Essential Volume 1. Are you ready for the country? So Jason is Jason Ringenberg, who was the front man uh, kind of leader of this band Jason and the Scorchers probably most known for uh, sort of their country flavored but yet somewhat punk flavored music that came out mostly in the 1980s this compilation came out in the early 1990s um, so another way we can do a variation is we can have like a nickname uh, for the front person and so a good example of that is going to be Big Head Todd and the Monsters. And so this was probably like their monster album, Sister Sweetly. Um, so they were a band based out of Boulder, Colorado. I remember since I lived in Colorado during this time period, during the 1990s, um, they were very big around there then. Um, I don't think they're huge nowadays, but I think they're still locally pretty big around that area. And so you've got like Broken Hearted Savior and Sister Sweetly and some of their songs that were getting uh, some record play back in the day. Uh, Bittersweet is a really good song as well. It's 1993. Um, so just about what I was going to expect. And so, and of course, he's called Big Head Todd because Todd Park Moore is a really, really big guy. I think he's like six foot nine, a very, very tall guy. Now, another variation is the most straightforward of the variations where it's just literally person's real first and last name. So we've got Grace Potter and the Nocturnals. This is somewhere. Uh, this came out in the year 2007. So Grace Potter and the Nocturnals are probably your second most famous band from Vermont after Fish. Um, I think Grace Potter is somebody who would have been a lot bigger star if she'd been around in the 70s or the 80s or even maybe mining the Sheryl Crow sort of um, audience in the 1990s. So she was probably a little bit too young. Um, I find her studio albums, including this one, uh, to be kind of sterile, a little bit too safe, a little bit too much uh, geared towards... Uh, boring middle-aged people but she's really good live i've seen her live i have a um a live album of hers with some of these songs like stop the bus that's actually way better than this um now you, we can do initials so we've got katie lang and the reclines with this album absolute torch and twang so this is sort of like during kind of uh, when she kind of burst onto the scene. The country music establishment wasn't into her, but other people were. This was from 1989. And so, uh, so she's very sort of cowboyish, western dress. I'm guessing this scene was probably from her na native Alberta. And my last variation is going to be John P. Strom and the Hello Strangers with Caledonia. Uh, this came out in, I believe, 1997. So John Strom would be most well known for being one of the Blake Babies. Uh, then the follow-up bands from the Blake Babies like Antenna and Velo Deluxe. And then he went solo. This was his first solo record. He was calling his backing band the Hello Strangers, although that name got quickly dropped. He released a couple other solo albums. Then he kind of uh, left being a musician and became a music industry lawyer, but he actually has a comeback record, uh, something to look forward to, that is uh, now available for pre-order.